I'd like to call to order the December 5th, 2022 meeting of the West Free Water School Committee. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A moment of silence. Thank you. The listing of matters are those reasonably anticipated by the chair, which may be discussed at this meeting. Not all items listed may in fact be discussed and other items not listed may also be brought up for discussion to the extent permitted by law. This meeting is being shown live on cable and is being live streamed on the West Bridgewater Community Access Media website, wb-cam.org. A recording of this meeting will also be made available on wb-cam.org. I'd like to introduce Ms. Hannah Freeman to the committee. Hannah, thank you for being here and uh, taking the time to be our student rep tonight. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, so first up is one of my favorite things, recognizing some of our awesome students. Tonight we have um, with us the 2022 John and Abigail Adams scholarship recipients and the recipients of the Peace Poster Award. Thank you. Um, I want to first thank the school committee for allowing us the opportunity to recognize some of our amazing seniors. Um, the students here this evening have received the Abigail Adams Scholarship. Um, just a little about the Abigail Adams Scholarship. Um, you need to be able to score in the advanced category in one of the MCAS high school state exams. So ELA, math, or the STE, uh, which for us is biology. Um, also, you need to score in the proficient or advanced category in the remaining two high school state assessment tests. So all these students here tonight have done just that. Um, along with that, they need to have a combined MCAS score on these assessments that rank in the top 25% of their class. Um, oh, actually, their school district. So they may be from ascending district, uh, so it's for there. So um, a great job to all of you. Congratulations. Um, with the Abigail Adams um, Award, you have tuition up to eight semesters um, in a Massachusetts state school. So it can be up to um, about $8,000 over the course of four years for some of the UMass sc uh, schools. So congratulations when I call your name. If you could just come on up. And then if you can stay over here, we'd love to get a group picture, OK? Our first recipient is Bryn Bouvier. <laughs> Nora Brodo. <laughs> Brendan Collins. Hope Crompton. <laughs> Not all students were able to be with us this evening. They had other commitments with work and so forth, so I don't believe Hope is here. Uh, Isabella D'Agostino. <laughs> Maddie Ellis. Madison Ellis. <laughs> Hannah, <laughs> Hannah Freeman. <laughs> Benjamin Fuller. <laughs> Brendan Gallivan. <laughs> no, Brendan? Kiera Gallivan. <laughs> Alexa Gately. <laughs> Amanda Jakes. <laughs> Julius Jordan.
Okay, I don't think Julius is here. Evan Caprillion. <laughs> Pierce Keen. Uh, oh, hello, Pierce. Sarah Kierton. Bryce Layton. Uh, Lexi Levine, I don't believe she could be here this evening. Okay. Uh, Caitlin Lockwood, again, I don't was a, don't think she was able to be here. They both deserve a round of applause. Though. <laughs> Dorothea McGrath. Ryan McGrath. Adara McNeil. No Adara. Kira O'Connell. Thomas Perna. Sean Peterson. <laughs> Drew Rafel. It's pretty awesome how many we have. Noel, uh, Nolan Reck. <laughs> Kyan Santiago Collin. Hassan Santaswaso. <laughs> Hannah Smith. <laughs> Stephanie Stanton. <laughs> and last but not least, Kaylee Terrio. Um, Can we get over there and see what the Does the school committee want to stand with them? I think you should. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Baldwell, can I bother you for one quick sec? I guess Hope Prompton is here. She came in late. Oh. So can we get her over here and just say congratulations? Of course. Tell Hope to come here. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so she wasn't in the picture. Embarrass her to be late. There are a few others that weren't there. Uh, Hope Prompton. Hey. Congratulations. Good job. 
Thank you. All right, so of course everyone's welcome to stay for the remainder of the meeting, but we'll just break for about two minutes to give people a chance to leave. They choose to. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we are back. Um, and happily, we have some more recognitions to do. The um, Peace Prize poster recipients, Mr. Lehman. All right, good evening. Uh, the Lions Club of West Bridgewater sponsors the Lions Club International Peace Poster Contest for our district each year. Uh, this year's theme was Lead with comp uh, Compassion. I'd like to call up our three top winners. In third place, Mr. Aaron Hambly, come on up. In second place, Tristan Hamley. And in first place, Miss Chloe George. <laughs> great job, you guys. Very, very well done. It came out great. All right, um, approval of minutes. First, I'd like to make a motion to accept uh, our November 7th, 2022 minutes as presented. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And uh, next, I'd like to make a motion to accept our, dis our November 16th, 2020 minutes as presented. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Hi. So moved. Uh, superintendent's update, Mr. Bodwell. All right, we've got to have a few updates. The first is going to be Mrs. Hamill is going to give us an update on the fall sports and the winter sports. We've just started. Well, hello everyone. Thank you so much for inviting my inviting me in. I always love coming here and whooping it up with our Wildcats. <laughs> here we go. We had a great fall season, everybody. Couldn't be more proud of our sports teams, athletes, uh, everyone involved. It was super, super exciting. Um, I do have some little uh, write-ups about each team that I'd like to share. Um, and I'm going to start with our WB golf team. So the golf team had a great season, finishing second in the conference and qualified for the state tournament. The team was led by senior captains Tyler Bisbee and Vidi Centrella. Mayflower All-Stars are Tyler Bisbee and Aiden Delahoy. A special thanks to the West Bridgewater Country Club for being very welcoming and an awesome host for our golf team. They do, they do a super job, um, and I love going over there. Our field hockey team, the WB field hockey team had a great season, finishing 11-5-3. The team was led by seniors Olivia Raza, Lily Martell, Kira O'Connell, and Lexi Levine. The girls showed up every day willing to work, proved their record. They were named MAC League champs. They made it to the state where they lost a hard-fought game to Ipswich 3-1. Special congrats to Olivia Raza, Kira O'Connell, Grace Poland and Abby Mata for being named MAC All-Stars. Well done. Volleyball, so exciting. The WB volley, Varsity Volleyball team had an incredible season, finishing 19-3. and three. The girls were led by a wonderful senior class, Maddie Ellis, Alexa Gately, Julia Holland, Dorothea McGrath, Leah Oliveria, and Hannah Smith. They dominated the regular season and followed with an impressive tournament run. For the first time in program history, they made it to the Elite Eight. They lost, they lost a hard-fought match against Hopedale. Special congrats to Alexa Gately, Hannah Smith, and Julia Holland for being named MAC All-Stars. Brooke Robichaud was also named co-MVP. We had a couple um, volleyball players participate in the, um, the MAC Volleyball Classic, Maddie Ellison, Alexa Gately. 
Um, but a wonderful season. Super great to see that um, program continue to soar and grow. So much uh, congratulations to them. Our boys soccer team had a great year posting a 10-7 and 3 record. They won a pl big playoff game in the playing game in the state and in the state tournament. They lost a close game to East Hampton, but they did a super, super job. The boys led by seniors Drew Rafel, Ryan Estrella, Kyan Santiago Calling, Ben Fuller, Ryan and Ryan McGrath. And they also, a special congrats to their MAC All-Stars, Ryan Estrella, Ben Fuller, and Ryan McGrath. It was an awesome season. Boys and girls cross country. The girls, uh, the cross country teams both had successful returns to the Mayflower Conference this fall. The girls went to on to win their 17th straight Mayflower Championship, and the boys won their fifth straight Mayflower title. Ella Dunbury, Viviana Morales Walken, Lily Andrews, Catherine Dunneman, and Lily M Milton were all awarded MAC All Stars. Ella Dunbury was also named Runner of the Year for the girls. For the boys, Bryce Layton, Ryan Ginnich, Greg Turner, Kenley Lame, and Jason George were all named All Stars. Bryce Layton was also named the runner of the year. Congrats to both the teams on a great season. Our football team, the 2022 w football, WB football team, had a very successful season with an 8-3 record led by Captain Sean Carter, Nate Anderson, and Will DeLuca. A high point of the season was a 35-13 win over Southeastern on Thanksgiving Day in the Battle of 106. <laughs> it was awesome. Congrats to James Harris, who in that game was named MVP. There were also many players nominated for league and state awards that haven't been announced yet. That's to be determined. And a special shout out to our seniors, Will DeLuca, Sean Carter, Nate Anderson, Jesse Ames, Jaden Cobbs, Jake, Jack Campbell, Nathan Hancock, Justin Astano, Brady Charles, Junior Duarte, Brandon LaGrange, and Cole Chadwell. Thank you for all the players and families for their hard work, dedication, and support. We look forward to another great 2023. Our girls soccer team had a great season. The varsity girls were 15-3-0 in the regular season, finished 16-4 overall. They were crowned MAC League, cha League champions and made it to the state tournament. Special congrats to League All-Stars Rachel Ginnich, Emma LaBoy, Amanda Jakes, and Kylie Fuller. Kylie was also named League MVP. Special thank you to our seniors Amanda Jakes, Chloe Hume, Bryn Bouvier, Talia Donahue, Sarah Keerton, Shelby Lame, Emma LaBoy, Nora Brodo. We are very proud of the hard work and success <coughs> of all the girls this season. Our cheer squad, the varsity cheer squad, they, their team had an amazing season and made all the better by the addition of Coach Romano. They proudly brought home the title of Maple Leaf Athletic Conference Division Four champions, once again qualifying, qualifying for South Regionals. The Wildcats held their own, some of the most competitive teams in the state, and rounded out their stellar season by outscoring their previous performance and hitting zero for the second year in a row. Senior captains, Adara McNeil, Casey Mackett, along with captains Reese Bunker, Serena McDonald, led the team by example and provided support and strength for their teammates all season long. Way to go, Wildcats. So as we head, here we are heading into our winter season. Certainly look forward to it. Um, we're excited. Winter season started. Amazing week. Um, teams happy to be back for sure. Boys and girls varsity basketball have their game opener. Um, against Crosstown Rivals East Bridgewater on December 14th at 4.30 for the boys and 6 for the girls. Um, so come on out and check it out. It, we don't have a lot of back-to-back -back varsity games, um, so it'll be really fun. We're trying to make it a fun day for the kids. Um, we have the girls, let's see, boys and girls track team. They get their season started on the 15th of December. They uh, run at Wheaton College. Girls ice hockey team gets started at home on Saturday, December 10th, 6.30 p.m. Come on out. And the boys team starts Saturday, December 10th, 8 p.m. at Gallo. The gymnastics team gets started on Wednesday, January 4th, 8 p.m. at the Spectrum Gymnastics against Notre Dame Academy. So super fun. Looking forward to another fabulous, uh, you know, season. The, uh, our student athletes, awesome. Special thanks to our coaches who, you know, put the time in every day, as do the students. So Come on out, check it out. We can't wait. We are Wildcats. We love it. We love it. So, um, but thank you. I always love talking about our, our teams uh, and our student athletes. Our dedication, devotion um, is is awesome. Thank you. Any questions? Ms. Hale, thank you for all you do. Oh. Mrs. Page, Mr. Hanner, our coaches, our parents, and most of all, our student athletes for representing uh, West Bridgewater with pride. Uh, we really uh, love to watch them. And the statewide tournament's been a great thing. Uh, we got to travel all the way up to Ipswich and out to yeah. Wakona Regional. If anyone knows where that is, bonus points to you. Uh, way out <laughs> in Dalton. So, uh, but we also got to have you know, schools travel to us. And I think it's a, it's a great way to end the season 
for our kids. So congratulations Absolutely. to everyone and most of all for their participation and hard work because that's, in the end, that's what's most important is they're, they're part of a team and they work hard. Absolutely. No, a fabulous job and it's a lot of fun for everybody. So thank you. Thank you. Next up, Mr. Collins for a technology update on our technology plan and where we were and where we're going. Thank you for having me tonight. Um, so one of my goals was to write up a technology plan, which was something that uh, DESE required many, many years ago when they got rid of the requirements. So the tech plan kind of fell apart after that. But um, it's kind of good to just gauge where we have come from, where we are now, and uh, what to look for in the future, because technology changes uh, quite a bit, um, a as we all know. So the last time we wrote a plan was in 2011. Um, so I started, uh, you know, contacting other districts. Hey, can I have a copy of your tech plan? And reached out to the technology teachers here, and we uh, we had a couple of uh, Google Meet sessions, and we just kind of chatted and talked about some points that they would like to see. So uh, what the plan has, it really outlines our current state of technology, what's in the classroom, what we have for infrastructure, our uh, internet connection and stuff, and. Um, uh, the technology that the staff uses every day. So, and it also contains goals, things that we would like to see uh, in the future. So going back to 2014, uh, we had about 300 Chromebooks and uh, it was mostly at the middle senior high school. They were on carts that the, they would get signed out and they would get rolled into the elevator and all that. Uh, staff had desktop computers, so they were very limited on you know, flexible classroom where they could uh, where they could move about and such. So we had a limited Wi-Fi network. We had zero security cameras. Uh, we did have a good amount of iPads <clears throat> in um, at the elementary schools, um, and we had projectors. Some were mounted. Uh, most of the ones, especially at the high school, were on carts, so cables on the floor and such. Um, and we only had a 300 megabit internet connection, which is um, pretty much what most households have right now. Um, if not more, but that was supporting the entire town at the time, 300 megabits. So, um, uh, so we've certainly grown since then. Um, what really uh, was a turning point in, uh, in the school district was our one-to-one -one Chromebook program. Uh, with the opening of the new high school, we were able to um, give a Chromebook to every student, grades 7 through 12, and that kind of kicked off our one-to-one -one Chromebook program. And we've been able to sustain that uh, since, the, since the building has opened. So all grade 7 students receive a new Chromebook uh, when they come up to the middle senior high school. Uh, each elementary classroom does have a complete set of Chromebooks. Um, and then if the inventory does support, it does fluctuate depending on budget. And of course, with COVID kind of put a bump in things, uh, we try to refresh devices in grade 10. Um, and we also uh, knew this year we have an inventory control program that where we can track inventory of Chromebooks and also track all of the repairs uh, that come into our office every day. Um, in 2014, we switched over to Google Workspace, which was uh, G Suite for Education. It's gone through a couple of names, but that really transformed how we teach, how students learn uh, in West Bridgewater and, and all the schools that are using Google. Um, instead of, uh, you know, paper and pencil, we're doing more things electronically. Students are able to collaborate uh, together on a document um, and, um, you know, they can even work remotely from home. Uh, collaborate on a document together. So that has opened up a lot of doors for students. Uh, students now have email, so it's easier to communicate with their teachers. It's easier to communicate with uh, their principal if they want to send them a message rather than uh, knocking on the door trying to find them. It also gave teachers the ability to store documents in Google Drive so that they could access their work from home, which was never possible before we switched over to Google Drive. Um, and then a few years after Google Workspace uh, came out, we uh, moved into Google Classroom, which was released. And that was really our first uh, full blown out uh, use of a learning management system. Uh, you know, it was, it, it was very limited uh, when it first opened, but it was, you know, you could see the potential um, and the connection with Google Drive that the Google Classroom offered. So um, that's, been, that's been tremendous. And even today, uh, just about every classroom uh, teacher that I know has some kind of Google Classroom space. Uh, groups are using it, such as drama, some sports teams. So it's, it's getting used quite a bit. It's a great way to collaborate and communicate. Um, and then, of course, Google Meet. We all know Google Meet. It's it kind of got us through uh, COVID, but uh, it's still used uh, on occasion today. It helps with meetings. If a parent can't uh, come on site for meetings, sometimes uh, we'll use Google Meet instead. Um, so it's still, a, it's still a very powerful tool for us to use. 
So uh, infrastructure and equipment uh, is another section in the plan. So right now, all the staff have a Windows laptop or a Chromebook, uh, depending on their role. Uh, all classrooms have a mounted digital projector. Um, some elementary classrooms have interactive whiteboards. Uh, they're definitely showing their age, but uh, they are uh, they are equipped with uh, some are equipped with interactive uh, whiteboards. Um, here at the high school, uh, we only have one uh, video editing lab. It's all Mac, Apple computers, and we have a Windows lab over here for the computer science and the computer art courses. The computer labs at the elementary school have really been eliminated. With all the students having a Chromebook, it kind of eliminated the need to have a separate space for just computers because they students are using the devices that they're most comfortable with. Um, and right now we have a uh, two gigabit internet connection, which is pretty strong that does support the entire town. And we have a 10 gigabit fiber backbone that connects all of our buildings and we do own that fiber. So um, all of our buildings are connected, uh, which makes it a pretty robust network that we have. Uh, when we talk about curriculum, uh, <clears throat> we look at um, the SAMR model and a lot of uh, observations that uh, that are done in all the buildings. Uh, we look at instructional technology use. Uh, it's using classroom observations. Uh, so it just rates, you know, are, are teachers just doing substitution or are they doing redefinition and where are they falling on that? How are they using technology in the classroom? That's what we look at. Um, and uh, a few years old now, but the Massachusetts Digital Literacy and Computer Science Standards, we look at those and we're designing curriculum. And then, of course, the ISSI standards, which are uh, the International Society for Technology and Education. Uh, we don't have a lot of formal technology curriculum written, but these are good, um, when designing lesson plans, these are good uh, plans to look at and good frameworks to look at for technology curriculum. And it's not just in the computer science classes. We like to see this in all the classes, in the elementary classes, in the science classes, English, all that. So we like to see technology integration in all of these uh, elements in, uh, in all the classes that we see uh, for all students. Uh, so software and student privacy, um, we're looking at software all the time and we're really trying to look at a way to uh, look at the software that we're using. Mostly is it uh, FERPA compliant to make sure that uh, we're not violating any of that. All the vendors that we use, we try to make sure that they are COPA compliant. Um, we are a part of the Massachusetts Student Privacy Alliance and what that means is that uh, any software that we use, we can actually, uh, through this organization, we can create a privacy agreement that uh, makes it, you know, pretty much ensures that the software that we're using is compliant uh, with, with privacy standards. So that's really a big topic right now, and it's try a lot of schools, including us in West Bridgewater, are really trying to get a handle on, uh, on student privacy and making sure that we're compliant, because it is very important. Um, and what has kind of streamlined things for, for us is the use of Clever. So a lot of the real big applications that we use are integrated with Clever, so it allows students to easily sign in with their Google account and it passes it right into their, um, right into the application without the need for an additional username and password. Clever passes all that on just through their Google account. Um, we have a pretty robust communication platform. So uh, of course we have Aptigee, which is our website. Uh, it's also our communication platform, so if you get a call uh, saying, you know, school is out or, or anything like that, uh, that is coming through Aptigee. That is, a, that is our, our program. That has replaced the Connect Ed program that we had for years. But uh, in addition to the website, we can now have text notifications, obviously phone notifications. If you have the mobile app, we can push notifications out to, through the mobile app. We can also push out email notifications. And it can also uh, manage our social media content, which, is, which has been huge for the principals because on their phone, if they have the Aptigee app, they can visit a classroom or take a picture of some student work and it can go immediately out to Facebook uh, or Twitter uh, right, right through the Aptigee platform. So that's been huge. Uh, we've had Aspen for quite a bit now, nine years, and um, uh, we have a pretty active student and parent portal. Pretty much you know, parents can go in, check their student progress, making sure their contact information is correct. And a lot of teachers and uh, principals use Aspen to uh, send out emails to either the entire school or just the 12th graders, or even, <coughs> even just to a class, Aspen can do that, send out email notifications. Uh, Mr. Bodwell's new favorite thing is the s'more newsletters. He loves those. Everyone but else's. What, <laughs> but what a, uh, what a great platform and just uh, you know engagement in the newsletters and, and making them fun to read, easy to read. Uh, so uh, what another great uh, method of communication through the newsletters, rather than just a static Google Doc with text, um, it's it's more visually appealing, and I um, you know I enjoy reading them. 
Uh, and of course, Gmail, where we haven't had, um, you know, students can now use Gmail uh, from grade uh, six and up, but, uh, you know, the, the use of Gmail has been a great communication platform for us across the district. So finally, uh, some goals. Um, you know, I really would like to, to come up with a, a budget that would support a staff replacement plan. The laptops, they, um, you know, they, uh, they work pretty hard throughout the day. They're being sometimes transferred to multiple classrooms, unplugged and plugged in all day long. So uh, they certainly don't have the shelf life that desktop computers had, the ones we had years ago. So um, about, you know, seven to eight years is about all you're going to get out of a, uh, a Windows laptop. Um, I would like to see the replacement of all the digital projectors with new interactive touch panels. We're, we're currently looking at that right now. Um, it's, a, it, it's a pretty amazing tool. It's pretty much a TV that students can touch and manipulate, and uh, it can really be a, an entire teaching platform right in, in one device. Uh, so it is pretty amazing. Um, you know, for staffing, we would really love to see an instructional technology specialist. Uh, this is kind of a new role, and this is not somebody that's going to do the nuts and bolts fixing things, but working with teachers and coming up with curriculum that integrates technology, uh, I think it's an important, uh, an important role in, uh, you know, in helping teachers. Because even new teachers that come in, they might not know all the technology that we use, so that person can work with that person and, and get used to the tools that, that we use. Um, also, a, uh, a computer technician or maybe even an AV, AV manager at the same time um, just, you know, the volume of repairs, as we bring in more technology into the classrooms, uh, there's the need for repairs and maintenance on all that. So having uh, a computer technician is, is one of our goals. And of course, developing a budget that, you know, will support the technology needs for the future. Uh, something like the, the touch panels, that's, that's the future and, um, you know, projectors are kind of going out the door. So we want to have a budget that supports that and, you know, continue to support the Chromebook the one initiative, things like that. So <coughs> the budget is certainly important. Um, and then develop a software review process. If we're going to be uh, using a new piece of software, whether it's on a large scale or even a small scale that a, a single teacher or a group of teachers want to use, how do we vet that to make sure that it's meeting privacy compliance and uh, is there a budget involved or, or any cost, anything like that. Um, and then I would really love to see, uh, you know, going back to like maybe even an instructional technology person, but a program for uh, new hires when they come in. How do we use all this technology that we have in the curriculum? Um, I know we have we have a short afternoon with the new hires on their orientation day, but um, maybe having a larger scale uh, where we have some time to sit down and, and get them into the Google environment, get them into the Ask environment, and really dig in how to use their grade books and such. So um, some schools are doing that. I think it's a great idea. So I, I'd love to see that implemented uh, at some point. I know that was a lot, but we have a lot going on. We have a lot of uh, great technology, so um, you know, I hope uh, you all enjoyed reading the plan. And I'll take any questions. I just had a question. Were you yeah. thinking um, the IT specialist coach would be like a K through 12 position yes. for the district? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I know some larger schools will have one uh, per each building, but yeah. I don't think our, our small district would need something like that. But you know, schedule a teacher can schedule an appointment. Hey, I, I want to do something with this new technology. How do I do it? You know, or yeah. I saw this on Twitter. I'd really love to use that a little bit more. That's what the that's the role of the coach. You know, um, okay. teachers can certainly reach out to me right now, but my schedule is pretty limited with everything else uh, that that I need to do. So it's it's tough getting into classrooms and working with teachers in my role. Yeah. So that was actually going to be my question. So for those two hires, the instructional technology specialist and the computer tech, um, who's doing it now? When there's an when there's uh, I have a part time technician okay. uh, that comes in uh, a few hours a week, uh, and myself. That's about it. I do have um, I've got some good senior interns over the years. I have an intern right now. I think she's with my son, <laughs> but uh, you know, so he, you know, I'll give a pile of Chromebooks to fix, and, and he'll do it. So. Having somebody full time, you know, we can really develop a schedule like, all right, this needs to get done today, and then you know, get the Chromebooks fixed. I've been taking some of the Chromebooks that are under warranty. I've just sent a bunch out to the vendor to get those repaired, so those should be coming back shortly. Um, yeah, it's it's you know, it's it's myself and the, and the part time technician that's doing it right now. Who's running um, with the goals with you? Is it just are you come? You wrote the goals, but. Yep. Who, how are you like developing them? Do you have a team that you're working with? Um, I always try to collaborate in? with the, the other school districts or 
Well, our school districts in the area, we do meet monthly through uh, a MassQ uh, subgroup. So uh, we meet and we just go over ideas and, you know, what are your pains, what's working, what's not working. So it's a great time to collaborate, see what other districts are doing. Uh, but here, I always involve the uh, technology team, the computer teachers at the elementary school, <coughs> the high school, uh, Mrs. Giannis, and um, so we're, you know, that's kind of, that's what, that's been our technology team, okay. that's what I call it, well, it's not really official, but these are the people that have been most involved with technology uh, over the years, and Mrs. Wenzel at the, at the Howard School is the, um, the Howard School uh, computer lead, uh, Mrs. Alex at the Hotel is the computer lead over there, so mm -hmm. I certainly collaborate with them. Thank, thank you, Mr. Collins. I think, you know, when we look at Hannah and our students, we, you know, we want to provide them with the best education possible uh, to make you college and career ready. And I think, you know, hopefully we're, we're continuing to move in the right direction. So thank you. Thank you yeah, very much. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now we have Mrs. Goulet and Mr. Lehman for PBIS on it. Again. Uh, so this is just a quick review of the SEL and the PBIS that's occurring at Spring Rose in mm -hmm. Rose and Rose and Hopper. Mm -hmm. um, so the backbones would be well, just to put out some quick definitions of social emotional learning. Up there in the five SEL the core competencies, and this uh, there's a lot of research that just says that if you explicitly teach these skills, students are going to be healthier and happier and perform better. Um, so some of these things we are getting in the RCB year one or year two. Then PBIS, uh, some of the technology here we have this year ago, we just won't necessarily identify and call it something, but PBIS things with a positive behavior intervention and support system. Essentially, it's when you come to Howard School and you see all the pride posters, you know, so our PBIS is our wildcat pride expectations, and it's being proactive to plan and anticipate healthy climate and giving the students opportunities in so many different ways. I know that's a pretty wide definition, but most schools have some form of PBIS that you go into, and it, in my opinion, is a, something that pretty much all schools at our level should have in some sort of uh, So the first thing Keith and I did last year was we realized that we needed to make sure we were aligning practices, and step one starts with aligning through the high school division of the graduate. So in the summer we had a whole bunch of posters and banners made. So throughout our school you can see the Vision of the Graduate Corps up there, as well as WB banners, well, our Wildcat banners, and we got together and we got the expectations called the matrix in the classroom. So that's just giving students very clearly defined expectations. It shouldn't be a mystery what are we asking the press students to do. They should know it and we should be doing that. So that's essentially what we're going to call tier one. So I said sort of rapid fire. So basically, we pulled the staff together and did a TFI inventory, which is tiered with that tier, the Dundee inventory, which takes, we look at what, what do we actually have going on at the Howard School, what don't we, and what are the next steps. Uh, in short, I know the first one just says, doing these things just makes the building, the students and staff, a happier and healthier place to be. Um, so we modified, reviewed, and looked at the prior uh, matrix and behavior uh, expectations, and then with the staff we review what tiers are. Just like we had uh, content and instruction, just tiers of instruction, the same thing with social emotional learning and behaviors, there's tiers one, two, and three. Um, and then once again, then our post is very visible to make sure that it was beginning to live in the schools. Uh, so some other things we did in year one is we had some pride surveys, pre to post, just can we at least say what P means for pride, stuff like that because it was year one getting it off um, before. In morning meetings, reviewing the pride expectations and giving more concrete examples of what it looks like, sounds like, feels like, and models. Um, took some opportunities to increase teacher and student interaction, not just in the classroom setting, so you see a lot more teachers outside at recess or in the lunch. Yes, it's beauty, it does increase safety at the same time. It also allows students to interact with their teachers in a non-classroom setting, which is also important. Uh, we began, you know, it was a lot of monthly assemblies. It didn't happen, it was a lot of assemblies. 
this thing was a step in the right direction and coming back from COVID, very important. Uh, we began the ticket system say around January and we got some traction um, and some support from PTO, so thank you to them again. Um, and we continue to run some school based challenges. So the Rose Elmet that I'm a little bit behind, which had a head start on this, so um, just to back up a little bit with where we are. We're formally ruled out PBIS, PBIS formally this school year. Last year I formed an SEL committee with teachers, and a huge shout out to them because they gave a lot of time to getting this up and running. Um, so we met with teachers, we talked about what are our problem areas, and you can see on that on the left hand side that's our what we call the wild, and you'll see the theme of wildcat and paw prints everywhere. Um, and that's what makes it so relatable to children. The Wildcat Way, so this is our matrix across the top of the different areas outside, not just in the classroom, but where else are we seeing problem areas. And then down the left-hand side is what we are expecting. Um, you can see the pause is there too. <laughs> On the right-hand side was just a common language around um, voice levels, something as simple as what does it sound like walking in the hallway? What should the cafeteria sound like? Um, and we found that we really need a common language across all classrooms and all settings. So then that also rolled into our PBIS, our PBWB Pride at RLM. So you can see on the left hand side, we used the um, vision of the graduate for the first couple of months. And then we kind of sat as a committee and said, well, what are we going to do with the other months? Mm -hmm. um, so we, there's a lot of other things we could focus on. So you can see we continue the PRID. Um, and we know that some of those traits we want to be able to kind of go through and pick different ones every couple of years. So um, what the teachers do on the right hand side, our SEL community again did a ton of work. They provide this document every month to the teachers and you can see there's links in there, different stories. Um, Miss Messina is I see the guru of SEL and um, a lot of those books she owns and she lends them out to teachers. Um, so they have a wealth of resources and um, books and materials that they can kind of integrate into the classroom throughout the month. And then the highlight, it's my highlight every Monday and Friday, and the kids do too, they share in the announcements in the morning what determination or what does ingenuity mean to them. And hearing from a kid's perspective is always great. And you put a five or a six year old in front of a microphone and they think they're like taking me to the school. <laughs> so it's definitely the highlight. We wanted to start our week off this way and end our week. And then the last slide just shows um, some of our kiddos, you know, that we always take a picture of them when they do their announcements. The, the quote up in the right hand corner, I can't remember the name of the book that was shared, but it says, Don't yuck my yum. Don't say you to someone's shirt because it might hurt their feelings. Mm -hmm. And that's the voice of a first grader. Um, at the bottom left hand corner, you can see we all the students every month get nominated by staff members. We're showing that character trait throughout the month and we call them down um, and we take a picture and we congratulate them. Not only um, do we see like they get highlighted here, but just naturally between PBIS and this um, high program. Teachers are just noticing that kids are kinder to one another. Um, last month, I did something special for the teachers. I took the teachers out for, I let the teachers have extra planning time. I took the kiddos out for recess, next recess. And the amount of children who just looked at me and said, thank you so much for doing that. Just goes to show that, you know, they're kind of incorporating it into their daily practice. One thing I forgot to mention when I go back, because I didn't bring it up, is the, P the PBIS point. Um, so they're earning paw prints. So whereas Mr. Lehman's using tickets, again, we want to pause. And I have a whole bunch in my pocket, and I've learned to take them out because they go through the washing machine. <laughs> um, as we hand out little tickets, and as everyone in the school hands them out throughout the school day. And they, they um, can cash them in on Fridays. Our younger students, you know, they want that quick, you know, they want that gel, gel pen. <laughs> the first way, they'll give up the five. Um, and then some of our older students are starting to really think about, hmm, do I want the pen or do I want the coupon for the free ice cream? Mm -hmm. And they're saving them, which is a great life lesson as well. Mm -hmm. And we gave out our first certificate for a free ice cream film mm -hmm. on Friday. So I didn't come back to mention that, but I want to bring that up. Thank you both. Yeah. I think it's... Oh, all right. Oh, thank you. <laughs> this is just here to uh, so sort of just to piggyback off of what Keith has said. Um, these are our assemblies, so now they're happening monthly. Uh, 
best part of the month is seeing the students because it's their work that they're putting on display in front of all the whole student body. Uh, so the staff buy-in, the student buy-in, and it's just a really positive environment. Uh, I think that's what not that it wasn't positive last year, but that has taken a giant step this year of the self-awareness the students have and just some of the interpersonal skills that they're using when a conflict arises. Uh, but either way, so this is where we've been so far. This month is positivity, last month was gratitude. And so October, November, and December are lining up to the respectful, respectful pathways curriculum that grades four, five, and six are using. Uh, you know, I know we need to get going, but so either way, this SEO block for every class, every week for 45 minutes, sixth grade does it twice a month, uh, twice a week at different times because their schedule runs differently. Uh, we start in September, and that whole month was the pride expectations, and we put a, even more of an emphasis on it. The ticket system started in the fall, and the tickets were lost. Really, really engage most of the student body. The data says 85% of the students who really, really work well with this. Um, same thing in the morning. We've done some mindful moments in the morning. Not as much as we should. It's fallen off a little bit lately, but it's, it's some practices that we have been doing it. Um, we have a weekly monthly wellness lessons uh, meetings which we set an agenda for the teachers weekly, so they'll have the resource and it's just right there for them. And this is just some of the extra, some of the tier two stuff. So if you see the graphs, the little chart up top, up top that would be more of a tier two strategy called Chico, check in, check out. So this would be just something that, you know, the students, and you can see on my whiteboard, they come down, they graph with me, and it's a great way to make sure I'm checking in and supporting any student who may need it. And, uh, it really continues on building the relationship to the students. The rest is the nature and so on. And this is a training that all the principals went to last Thursday. Uh, it was very engaging, it was excellent, and it's just those are restorative practices and three how they live together and it looks like things we are doing are purposeful and <laughs> no, again, thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for the involvement of your staff. And I think that's key that this is not just top down. This is really the school community coming together and prioritizing it for our kids. And to be successful learners, they need to feel safe and they need to feel valued and they need to be part of the school. And I think that's that's what we're doing. Um, we want kids to love coming to school. I would say 180 days is an awful long uh, amount of time if they don't love coming to school every day. So. Um, working together is very important. That's amazing. Thank you. It's a great Thank update. You. All right, moving along, we have our student rep update. Hannah? Hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, I'm sharing some updates about the schools um, in the district that we have going on. So, starting off the middle senior high school, the chorus of the Ruby Council on Aging to perform some patriotic songs for our local veterans at their luncheon. Uh, it was a wonderful opportunity to spend time with the veterans um, and thank them for all their services. This past Friday, we had lots of crazy socks for Rocker Socks Day. Thanks to everybody who participated. <coughs> um, the Westbrook Motor Band had a great time marching in the Tri Town Veteran Day Parade. They were proud to come out and recognize our veterans and thank them for their service. Uh, one of our seniors, Stephanie Stanton, did an amazing job directing a Broadway production as part of this new project. The audience is treated to an amazing show. Our Best Buddies group has been very active. Um, this is their first year for our group, and they have many great ideas uh, they're putting together. Our winter sports season is up and running. We are looking forward to some great things over the next few months. Moving on to the Howard School. The end of November was busy at the Howard School. Uh, the halls were filled for parent-teacher conferences, and you could hear the collaboration between parents and teachers. On the half day before Thanksgiving break, the Howard School held their November assembly and the theme was gratitude. Students worked collaboratively on their projects and put them on a display in front of the entire school body. A shout out to the pres pres presenters for each grade who are refining their public speaking skills. We welcome December with our annual Rock Your Socks drive on December 2nd. All proceeds go to Inclusion Matters. On December 2nd, Howard School held a coffee hour to engage parents and guardians on school related topics. On our next half day, December 14th, the Howard School will be holding a door decorating contest, and December 19th to the 23rd will be our spirit. The calendar will be sent home with all the topics. 
Next our was on McDonald School. The third graders read the book, The Loons on Broadway, and signed the balloon of their home. After designing it on paper, they wrote a persuasive essay to Macy's to try and convince them to include their designs in the book. As a finale, they created the balloons and paraded around the R RLM for first and second grades. Um, the student council is back. We had a record number of applicants this year. Some of the, the council responsibilities will include running the box tops fundraiser, hosting drafts to help others, setting up a new recycling program for the school, and assisting with our school wildcat pride initiatives. On Friday, December 2nd, RLM students were creating a mission of stock in recognition of the International Day of Disabilities. As of Friday, as of Friday afternoon, RLM students raised $331. All the money raised would go towards WB, SEP, AC, inclusion matters. And finally, the Spring Street School. Throughout the month of November, the preschool and kindergarten classes conducted lessons about helping others, especially those in need. There was great focus on the themes of kindness and generosity. And as a school, we did a great job demonstrating sharing with others. On Friday, December 2nd, the Spring Street staff and students were crazy mismatch stops in recognition of international disabilities. Um, as of Friday afternoon, the Spring Street students raised $241. The money raised would go towards the WB um, SCPAC division members. <coughs> no? Nice job. Thank you very much. All right, um, under business, Inclusion Matters update, Mrs. Dragonetti. The mission of Inclusion Matters as West Bridgewater Special Education Parent Advisory Council is to build inclusive schools and communities. We do this by supporting families of students with IEPs and 504s and including regular education parents by offering advice, advocacy within the school system and opportunities for education and community building through regular workshops and events for parents, guardians and families. Our annual Rock Your Socks event which celebrated International Day of People with Disabilities, was held this past Friday with terrific participation across all four West Bridgewater schools. The Board of Inclusion Matters is grateful to students, family, staff, and administration for helping to make this year's event a rocking success. With donations still being received, a grand total of funds raised will be shared later this week on our website, Facebook page, and through each school's newsletter. As more and more students with disabilities are included in our schools, we are all learning to include them. Not sure how? Here are a few tips. Be curious. If you or your child has a question about a person's disability, ask them. Their family or inclusion matters. Be friendly. Every person and family wants friends. Invite people with disabilities and ask how you can make the event accessible. Be patient. Some people with disabilities need more time to talk or move their bodies. Teach your kids to be patient and to slow down. Be honest. If a child with special needs isn't kind, encourage your child to tell them so. Kids with disabilities need feedback to learn kindness too. And finally, be brave. Students with disabilities are at a greater risk of being bullied. Teach your kids to be upstanders and speak up when this happens. In the words of Nicole Eredix, inclusive classrooms support the abilities and recognize the possibilities of all students. For more information about Inclusion Matters and upcoming events, you can find us on Facebook at Inclusion Matters MA or by visiting our website at www.inclusionmattersma.com. Great, thank you very much. Um, operational Services Division Rate Increase Update. Okay, the, the OSD is a division of the state uh, government and what it does, it does set rates for um, approved special education programs within the state. Um, they are traditionally they've gone up around two percent you can see over the, from fy 11 to 22 they went up an average of 1.87 percent uh, but this year for fy 24 they're proposing to go up 14 percent um, which is a pretty dramatic increase um, it's a topic of discussions amongst all superintendents in the mass um, and it looks like it's probably going to stick at that so i just wanted to make you aware I have reached out to our state reps to give them the information and just let them know that our concerns about that and what that does for West Bridgewater. If we take this year's numbers, not adding any potentially new students, it'd be about $150,000 increase over what we would normally um, <coughs> expect for an increase. So that's, that's a pretty major uh, increase for our uh, FY24 budget. <coughs> Just want to make you aware, and we'll certainly make others aware as we go through our budget process. Mm -hmm. and now MSBA. MSBA. So we, um, 
just so as a form of quick reminder, we for those watching that we did submit statement of interest for the Rose L. McDonald the Spring Street School last April. Um, we were selected by the MSBA to do a senior study, and they came out and visited both schools uh, in September. Um, and as for, we progress through our discussions, we were encouraged to submit a statement of interest for the Howard School, and that opens up the, their portal opens up late January through April. So. Regardless of where we stand with the project, we'll be submitting a statement of interest for the Howard School. The MSBA has their next board meeting on December 21st. Um, we hope to hear next week if we're invited to attend that meeting. Um, and at that meeting, they will vote on projects that are selected for the core project. So fingers crossed um, that we are moving forward. Uh, if we are selected, there's lots of things that will have to happen um, within a certain time frame. Um, but if it doesn't happen this year, we're very hopeful it will happen in the, in the near future. So just want to provide an update. Right. And, then the Reed's collaborative. and then just uh, in your packets, you have the Reeds Collaborative Annual Report for FY23. Uh, details their programs, which we house one of them here at the Middle Senior High School. Um, we're an active member of Reeds, and uh, I regularly attend their board meetings. Uh, they're, it's a great collaborative that we have. We pull many resources from. Great, thank you. Um, I'm just taking a look at the time. It's almost six o'clock, and I know um, some of us want to get to the um, the town meeting. But do we um, the policies next on the agenda? Is it going to be sort of a lengthy? I don't, I don't or, think so. I, don't I think so. we can probably get everything done within five minutes. Okay. All right. So let's go. We're good. <laughs> okay. So um, I'd like to make a motion to open the following policies for review um, and discussion at our next meeting. GBEC, Workplace Drug and Alcohol Abuse Policy. GBED, Tobacco Use on School Property by Staff Members Prohibited. JICH, Alcohol, Tobacco and Drug Use for Students Prohibited. ADC, Tobacco Products on School Premises Prohibited, DBJ, Budget Transfer Authority, DJA, DGA, Authorized Signatures, DH, Bonded Employees and Officers, DJA, Purchasing Authority, DJE, Procurement Requirements, and DK, Payment Procedures. Can I get a second? Second. Um, so these were selected, GBEC, GBED, JICH, and ADC. We're all selected because they are cross-referenced in the policies we're about to discuss and vote on. Um, all of the D policies were selected based on review by MASC in their most recent newsletter. They reviewed all of the finance policies. So this is about half of the D policies. We'll open the other half at the next meeting. Any other discussion? No. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Okay. Um, for the policies to review tonight, um, I'm as usual, going to make various motions with um, discussion points that are specific to the policies that are grouped based on discussion points. Um, so I'd like to make a motion to adopt policies AHAMA, <coughs> Parental Notification Relative to Sex Education, IHAMB, Teaching About Alcohol, Tobacco, and Drugs, and EEAJ, Motor Vehicle Idling on School Grounds, as written and revised. Can I get a second? Second. Discussion? Yep, so for these three, um, there were no major revisions made, um, and they're just basically being aligned to um, MASC recommendations. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I'd like to make a motion to adopt policies EEA, Student Transportation Services, and EEAA, Walkers and Riders, as revised. Can I get a second? Second. Discussion? Yep, so there's minor changes to the verbiage to be consistent with MASC. Um, for provision of bus transportation, for, uh, we have um, emphasis on the kindergarten students still receiving their door-to-door uh, -door service, um, and students in grades one through 12 who live within 1.5 miles. Um, just to point out, it's not consistent with the MASC policy. MASC had differing um, limits within um, broken down by grades. However, we're recommending to not adopt what the MAS MASC has outlined and um, keep it with what we currently have in practice, which is the 1.5 um, for grades 1 through 12. For policies E, 
EEAA, um, we removed a section as it wasn't consistent with the MASC policy and not in line with our current practice, for the, which uh, we have outlined as pedestrian bicycle safety programs. Um, there was some discussion in there about installation of flashing lights at the description, at the discretion of the uh, West Bridgewater Police Department. And then for EEA, um, there was a whole section outlining um, guide, transportation guidelines that we removed that we removed them because they weren't really um, all specific with the current practice. Um, and it was really very granular what was in there and um, you know, it was subject to change with, with uh, you know, it, within every year. So um, we found that that information that we recommended to remove that are in your policies to be, you know, they were found in handbooks or, um, you know, in the contract with the bus company um, or the superintendent procedures. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, um, move to adopt policies EEAEA, -E bus driver examination and training, EEAEB, -E drug and alcohol testing for school bus and commercial vehicle drivers, and EEAG, student transportation and private vehicles as written and revised. Can I get a second? Second. Um, discussion. Yep, so these are new policies for our index recommended by MASC. The policies address transportation and safety. EEAG, private vehicles, um, we're looking to adopt as written by MASC. EEAEA and EEAEB, we're looking to adopt with some revisions to make specific to West Bridgewater. The revisions included um, the delegation of responsibility to maintain safety protocols and follow federal regulations regarding the employment of bus drivers to the bus contractor rather than by the superintendent. So we're looking for that change. All of the safety points that are included in, in these policies are um, integrated into the contract with Lucini. That's it. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 And that's it. That's it. All right, thank you very much. Uh, warrant sub. November 3rd, 2022 for $96,212.93. November 10th, 2022 for $92,421.67. November 17th, 2022 for $43,479.55 and November 24th, 2022 for $156,207.60. The following two payroll warrants, November 11th, 2022 for $566,349.03 and November 25th, 2022 for $652,610.10. As always, all warrants are public record and one signed are available in the Selectman's Office for review. All right, thank you very much. Uh, public comment, members of the audience wishing to address the committee may do so at this time. Audience members are reminded that personnel issues or issues that would violate student or employee confidentiality cannot be addressed during the public comment. Seeing that we have none, I think in the interest of time, um, I'm not gonna read the um, wonderful events that we have coming up on the calendar but they are uh, accessible through our um, agenda that's linked on the town uh, West Bridge Road website. Our um, next regularly scheduled school committee meeting is January 9th 2023 at 6 p.m. here in the Learning Common. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you.